pulpit. I am evangelist Eddie Cheney. Today the Lord has put upon my heart a word to share with you. The, the thing I want to talk about today is the enemy's methods of entry into our lives. I'd ask you to remember me throughout the program and please pray for us that we be found doing what God would have us to do going where God would have us to go, and always saying what God would have us to say. Know that we love you, my friends, and we pray for those of you that are born again, bathed in the blood, those of you that have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. We pray that God would open up the windows of heaven this day, today, and pour out upon you blessings that you have not room enough to receive, my friends. Also, I would like to encourage and invite those of you that are blood-bought and sold out to Jesus Christ. Please pray about helping us fill these airways with the gospel, the good news of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You can do so by simply emailing us your CDs of your preaching sermons or Bible teachings, you can mail them to me, Evangelist Eddie Cheney, 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee. Now we'll put those on the air free of charge to you, my friends. It doesn't cost you a thing, 
but to mail us your sermons on CD or cassette tapes, and we will broadcast them live right here in the pulpit. Also, you gospel groups that want to get your music out and be heard, you can mail your CDs along with your uh, information, and we'll share that on the Gospel Music Jukebox radio program. Just simply mail your CDs to Evangelist Eddie Cheney, 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee, 38571. Once again, that's free of charge to you. We're just asking you to pray about helping us fill these airways as we go out into the world with the good news, preaching the gospel of our precious Lord and Savior. All right, friends, we're going to be right back right here in the pulpit as uh, we get ready to bring you the word the Lord has placed upon my heart this day for you. I would entitle today's sermon, The Enemy's Methods of Entry. We'll be right back, my friends. Welcome back right here in the pulpit. I want to start off with uh, sharing a verse with you from Genesis chapter 4, verses 3 through 7. In a process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering but unto Cain, and to his offering he had not respect. 
and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou had doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Genesis chapter 4, verses 3 through 7. Won't you open the tablet of your heart and allow God to write his word upon it? You see, this picture, um, it, it, it pictures the enemy to me. I mean, he's, he's crouched like a, a wild animal at the door of the soul, my friend. The mind, will, and emotions. He's ready to spring through this open door and set up a stronghold of lies to protect himself and devour you and I, those of us that are born again. You see, the enemy, you must remember, he can't be everywhere at the same moment. However, he has a, a, a herd uh, of, uh, of uh, fallen angels, evil spirits, which uh, fell, who works with him. Therefore, when I use this general term, the enemy, I am speaking, my friends, of the powers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. The primary way that the enemy enters one's soul, mind, will, emotions, you got to remember, is through our thought, our thought process. Once he enters and establishes his ground, he builds a fortress of lies around himself to protect and maintain his presence and control. You got to remember that we are to be aware of the enemy's devices lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices there in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. But many of us lose battles to the enemy because we just don't understand how his evil powers can enter into our lives and set up a stronghold. Furthermore, we may never get free until we understand how he entered. Last, until we understand his methods, we may re remain vulnerable to his reentry, my friend. Quite often, the enemy may come into one's life and set up a stronghold through invitation. This means that we actively invited him into our lives to set up a stronghold. Whenever we seek knowledge or power from the supernatural other than through God, we are giving the enemy an open invitation to come into our souls and set up a stronghold, my friend. This usually happens when we rebel against God and uh, over the authorities over us. For rebellion is, is the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is, uh, is as uh, iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He hath also rejected thee from being king. 1 Samuel 15 verse 23. You see, whenever a believer seeks a, a psychic or looks to a, a horoscope for an answer, he is vulnerable to the enemy. At that point, the enemy can enter into his life. I know of a, a Christian young man who rebelled against his father and got involved in Satanism. It can even be a dangerous going to a, a, a fortune teller, my friend. Uh, Solomon gives us a, a grave warning. Can a man take fire into his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Check out Proverbs chapter 6, verse 27. Remember that a common method of the enemy is through temptation. This method is like, uh, well, dangling a carrot before the donkey. The enemy dangles the pleasures of sin before us. 
This quite often comes through the lust of the flesh or the lust of the eyes. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away from his own lust and enticed. Remember James chapter 1 verse 14. Remember what happened to David? And it came to pass uh, in an... Uh, that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. You can read that right there in Second Samuel chapter 11 verse 2. It is like what uh, may happen to the man who is going through uh, marriage difficulties. In the midst of the difficulties... Well, a younger and more attractive woman than his wife happens to show up on the scene and opens the door to adultery through flirtation, my friends. Temptation is a common method of the enemy to enter into our lives. One of the most unrecognized methods of the enemy is through intrusion. Yes, you see, we normally don't think of this method because he comes to us, uh, well, with a mask on. He appears to look just like us, ourselves. He invades our minds through our thoughts. One way that he uh, invades our thoughts is through dreams. We may have dreams that come through our uh, experiences from that day. We may also have dreams from God, but sometimes we may have dreams that come from the enemy. You see, I know someone that had a recurring dream of, uh, of being uh, before a sizable congregation of people to deliver the message of God. They would be uh, excited that so many people had come. However, when they stood to speak, most everyone got up and left. They awoke from, from, from the feeling like that uh, they must have been something really wrong with them. Then one day, they woke to the fact that although they thought that it was from God, but it was from the enemy, trying to deceive them that no one loved them. Yes, one of the most unrecognized method of the enemy is through intrusion. You see, furthermore, we have all had thoughts that we assume came from self that were uh, condemning thoughts. Most likely those uh, originated with the devil, my friend. Yeah, you can read in 1 Samuel uh Chapter 18, verse 10, and it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul and he prophesied in the midst of the house and David played with his hand as at other times and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. You want to read that and understand that one of the most unrecognized method of the enemy is through intrusion into our lives. Hey, another method which the enemy may use is our unbridled imagination. Unbridled imagination. I mean, I've had people tell me that, hey, I, I, I don't have an open mind to their ungodly ideals. One gentleman told me they grew up in West Texas and when, uh, they didn't have no imagination. They had to work all the time. But there are some places to which that we would, uh, that we should not allow our minds to wander. Because that when they know, knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish hearts was darkened. Check out Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to, to the obedience of Christ. Check out 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. 
You see, a man can, in his own imagination, undress a beautiful woman in his mind, but Jesus warns us about doing so. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. One of the methods in which the enemy may use is our unbridled imagination. Some of these attacks from the enemy you may have never thought about, but today the truth will set you free. You see, the enemy often enters the soul of the individual through, well, empty-minded. Empty when, you, when you just nothing. Hmm, interesting to think about that for just a moment. You see, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, remember, seeking, re seeking rest and finding none. Then he saith, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he find it empty, empty. Remember that word, empty, swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter into the, and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto the wicked generation. Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 through 45. Emptiness is dangerous. Empty mindness is dangerous, my friend. You see, we need to be, what? Have on the helmet of salvation. We need to be in the word of God. We need to be busy about the will of the Father. We need to be doers, not hearers only. We must be active in the body of Christ because our God is not dead. He's alive and he is working actively in the lives of his children. You and I, those of us that are born again, bathed in the blood. Now, another way that the enemy may enter into our lives is through unforgiveness. You see, quite often, People unknowingly open the door to the enemy through unforgiveness. You remember there in Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, for uh, if ye have forgiven men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I mean, look in diligence, lest any man fall to the uh, of the grace of God, lest uh, any root of bitterness springeth, springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Look at Hebrews chapter twelve, verse fifteen. When we fall, when we, when we, you and I, those of us that claim to know God, when we fail to forgive the the offense of others, we open the door to the to the torments, to those evil spirits. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Look at Matthew chapter 18, verse 35. When we fail to forgive, we don't receive forgiveness, my friend. The enemy has legal rights to enter and remain there there is also a need to forgive self as well as others. Quite often, unwillingly, we open the door to the enemy through unforgiveness because we refuse to forgive those who have offended us, lied on us, those that have took advantage of us, those that have hurt us. But we must forgive others. Many people allow the enemy to come, come in through fear, worry, and anxiety. I mean, we see this clear in the life of Job. Although Job didn't sin with his actions or by cursing God, he opened the door to the enemy through fear. He offered sacrifice for his sons just in case they might have sinned. He had many guards uh, uh, for his uh, possessions. And he was afraid of losing his health. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. 
I was not in safety, neither hid. I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Look at Job, chapter 3, verses 25 and 26. I mean, basically, he, he was saying that he did uh, what was right, but knew it wouldn't do any good. Anyway, in contrast, listen, Peter states, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. First Peter chapter 5, verses 7 and 8, my friend. We have the option either to cast all of our cares upon the Lord or face the roaring lion. My friends, that lion, that roaring lion, he will devour our lives as he roars. He's not toothless, as some well-meaning preachers have uh, stated. I want you to know that many people allow the enemy to come into their lives through fear, worry, and anxiety. Some people allow the enemy to come, well, in through uh, stubbornness. I mean, stubbornness is doing things your own way in spite of uh, repeated warnings. You have some people do allow the enemy to come into their life through their stubbornness. Think about this. A Bible term for stubbornness is stiff-necked. You remember the verse there in Second Chronicles, uh, chapter 30, verse 8, Now ye be not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto the Lord, and enter into his sanctuary, which he hath sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that, that the uh, fearness of his wrath may turn away from you. Second Chronicles, chapter 30, verse 8. Jump into the word of God today and be aware of the enemy's devices. Some people allow the enemy to come in through their stubbornness. Some people, they allow the enemy to enter in through um, negative thoughts. Some people seem always to look at, at the glass as being, well, half empty. I mean, 10 of the 12 spies that searched out the promised land came back with an evil report because they looked at the negative. Are you looking at negative or positive in your life? You see, when Peter stepped out of the boat to walk on the water at the word of Jesus, he did well until he began to focus on the storm. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind uh, bolsterous and he was afraid and began to sink, he cried saying, Lord, save me. Matthew chapter 14, verses 29 and 30. We also may well sink when we focus on our attentions on the negative. We need to be looking at the positive. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Yes, some people let the enemy enter in through negative thoughts as they focus upon the negative, not the positive. Also, the enemy often enters through the door of anger. Many times, he uses the door of anger to enter into our lives. You remember... As we shared with you there at the beginning, there in Genesis chapter 4, verses 3 through 7. Now Cain was wroth, very angry, 
You see, this opened the door of sin to come into his life. It was like a a wild animal crouched at the door, ready to spring through that open door. Remember, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 6 through 27. We are permitted to be angry one day, but not two. If we remain angry longer than one day, we leave the door to our soul open for the enemy to come into our souls and set up a stronghold, my friend. Yes, many allow the enemy to enter in through the door of anger. Now, sometimes the enemy enters into one's life through a generational curse. Remember what the Lord said, Thou shalt not bow thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Look in Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. Limitations, chapter 5, verse 7. We can be born with a, well, with a generational curse. Without even realizing it. However, Jesus came to set us free from generational curses. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we may receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Look in Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. You need to quit listening to the lies of the devil. And you need to get into the word of God and shut the door, the enemy's entrance point into your life. Sometimes the enemy uh, may try to enter in uh, through a word curse. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are two tides to a, a word curse. First, when we place negative judgments over others, we are subject to God's judgment over ourselves. Judge not that ye be not judged, remember? For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again, my friend. Look at Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. Second, I want you to think about that because the enemy does enter in through some people's lives through a word curse. Second word curse occurs when when there is a uh, negative communication uh, by word expression or actions by those in authority or those whom you have uh, considered to be uh, an authority over you, including, yeah, your own words and thoughts. But I say unto you, that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Look at Matthew chapter 12, verses 36 and 37. We'll be right back with the conclusion of this word that we're sharing with you today. The enemy's methods of entry right here in the pulpit. I got a smile on my face, a little dance in my step. Folks think I want some money, but they ain't got it yet. All around the local town, they're starting to inquire. I got fired up and filled up with that holy gold. 
simple resolution, the answer to shutting the door in the enemy's face and opening the door to Jesus Christ. You see, the answer is Jesus. You must know that Jesus came to set the captive free and heal the brokenhearted. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath set me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Read Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. And know that Jesus is the answer. You see, once you've accepted Jesus Christ, once you have been baptized, once you have acknowledged that he is your precious Lord and Savior, once you've come to that place and realized you're a sinner in need of a Savior, and once you have rejected the world and the world's teaching and run into the arms of Jesus Christ with that broken heart and that contrite spirit, my friend, he that dwells inside of you is greater than he that is in the world. You need to stand up, rise up, and tell the devil to shut up. You need to learn to rebuke the enemy. You need to learn to get dressed every day of your life as you die and pick up your cross and follow after Jesus. Jesus is the answer. You can be set free from those 
little aggravations that the enemy is trying to do when you recognize some of the entry points that he is coming into your life. And you stand up and you shut the door in the devil's face in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. This day, we declare prosperity in your life. This day, we proclaim a financial blessing, a natural blessing, a spiritual blessing into your life because you have recognized some of the entry points the enemy's been coming into your life and you've grabbed a hold of the word of God and now you are applying it. You're tired of being tired. You're tired of being tormented. And you've realized that he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. If you're born again, bath in the blood. Speak such as you ought with the authority of the Holy Ghost, my friend. There's power in the name of Jesus. Woo, praise God. Well, know that we love you. We're praying for you. Keep on keeping on. Don't you let go of that unchanging hand of the great I am. And when the enemy comes at you, <laughs> woo, just tell him who you are. I said when the enemy comes at you, just tell him who you are and who you serve. We love you. We'll see you next time right here in the pulpit. So